raise a mug to the homie who couldn't make it here on time for spoopy season. This one's for you, Sophie and Toffee. All tea, no shade. They did get here late, so they didn't make it in time for spoopy season, but I stayed decorated just for them because even though they didn't make it in here on time for October, I am still super excited for this box. It is Halloween themed, so it's a little weird for November, but hey, it's November 1st, so All Saints Day? One thing I noticed right away is the box is different. When did they change the box? I feel like it's been a couple months since I got an elves box, and so I'm not sure if they changed the box? What was the last elves box I did? I know that they changed their website, they changed their subscription portal, they changed a whole bunch of stuff, and so I guess with it came new boxes, which I'm super excited about. I love the dinosaur theme, by the way. Like, this little dinosaur is so freaking cute. <laughs> okay, enough chitter chatter, let's open it. Chitter chatter? When have I ever said chitter chatter? Oh, oh my gosh, neon. Oh, oh, I love neon so much. Glow box. Okay, see, I knew that it was like a cauldron and a jack-o'-lantern. I didn't know these things were in it, so I'm super excited to see what is in here. Okay, so we'll look through that when I'm done, if I'm confused by anything, which is not hard to do. Ooh, there's so much stuff in here. It's really heavy. It's a heavy box. So let me set the molds aside because I like to do those last. Ooh, because those are my favorite parts. The molds are my favorite, so I like to look at those last. Um, but we got some shaker oil, including floating shaker oil in green. I think this is, oh, what is there? It, ew, what is that? What is that? There's something floating in there. Is it the pigment or is there like something in there? Oh, that turned my stomach. I think that's just pigment. Ew, 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 what is that? <laughs> okay, wait, okay, I need to revisit that because that really kind of grossed me out. Ooh, ooh. Uh, 15 minutes later. To be mixed with shaker oil? Oh! Okay, so this is kind of like... Hold on. So this is kind of like the shaker oil that they sent with the um, bottles box from last year. The fish bowl where I killed my fish all over again. If you haven't seen that, you can go watch it. I'll put a link up here. We reminisce about a dead fish. And it's a huge, massive resin fail, so if you'd like to see that, you can go watch it. But in that box, it came with like this shaker oil that is shaker oil and color, and it's like separated. I think it says you mix this with shaker oil, so you probably put this um, so that you have like inside of the blue it would be green, which is really freaking cool. Minus this thing floating around in it. I'm not happy about the thing floating around in there. I, do I don't... Not a fan. Don't know what that is. Um, we got these adorable little jack-o'-lantern charms! Stop. I love how these all come in different colors. Like the gold and the copper and the silver and the brass. That is so pretty. And it gives you some options. Let's see. Oh, these are little bats! These are super cute! These are little bats. I bet you these glow in the dark. What? Oh, it's a light! Oh, there we go. Okay, it's gonna flash a little bit, so be careful if you're um, photosensitive. There it goes. That's really bright and pretty. Kind of looks red, actually. I like that a lot. Um, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <gasps> oh, they're so cute! Ah! They're little bats! I love bats so much. Have you ever heard of a bat box? It's like a little habitat box you can keep in your yard or on top of your house for bats to go to. Plus it helps with pollination and pest control. And it is something that my husband and I have talked about doing for a really long time. I love bats so much. They're so cool. They're so cool and they're so cute. Plus they eat bugs and I don't like bugs. I see 
the most beautiful pigment powder ever. These two shades, pink and green, oh my, I bet you they glow in the dark too. But even like under UV light, these would look so cool. Ooh, we go to like a rave. <laughs> a rave to the grave. I love these two shades because it looks like watermelon. I know a lot of people think strawberry too. Um, definitely not what I would think of for Halloween, but because they glow in the dark, that's probably a good uh, color your things for glow in the dark. Not really Halloween, but I love it anyway because I love these colors. What else? Oh, nail decals. I may just use these on my nails and not <laughs> on a resin craft. I love this guy. He's like, hey. <laughs> Look at this one. So, ooh. Okay, just a couple more things. We have amazing confetti. Look at how awesome this is. And last but not least is three to one resin. I have mixed feelings about three to one resin, although I think I have figured out the math. Famous last words. Our first mold are these shaker bits, which is really similar to their creepy cute box that they did last year, is including like a little silicone mold to make your own shaker bits, which I really like. Um, I was holding it upside down. Our second mold are these little keychain tags, and excuse me while I freak out about this Rocky Horror Picture Show one. I mean, they made it look like a vampire because they gave it pointed teeth. But this is Magenta's mouth saying, stay for a bite, bite. Which is from Rocky Horror. I am a massive Rocky Horror Picture Show fan. I'm gonna make five million of these because ah, I'm so excited. Plus, we have quote the Raven nevermore, Edgar Allan Poe, the Raven. Um, and then just a plain trick or treat one. But th this one, this one all day. This one wins all keychains. No other keychain can ever be as awesome as this keychain. Now we got these two massive molds, which I am super nervous about because the way they work, oh no, <laughs> I'm so scared. Oh, there's a little jack-o'-lantern face. I didn't notice that before. So the way they work is you fill it up with a little bit of resin. I hope they gave us how much to fill it with. And then you put this in like a plug and you just hope and pray to the crafting gods that your resin doesn't spill all over the uh, edges. Don't get me wrong. I am really, really, really excited for these molds, but I just like, could you, there have been a better way to do it? Like, I don't know. And then this is the cauldron which is super cute. I like its little feet. <laughs> and then we got a bubble lid for the cauldron and then like a pumpkin lid for the jack-o'-lantern. Please tell me how much resin to use. Please tell me how much resin to use. Halfway, halfway. Okay, everybody, we're remembering it's halfway. We'll see how well that actually works. I don't know. Okay, so even though it didn't get here in time for spoopy season, I'm still gonna keep it Halloween themed. So this is kind of like a bonus week, I guess. <laughs> it's like spoopy episode four and a half. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I'm looking at all of these and I see so much potential. I kind of don't even know where to start. I think I am just going to jump right in by making my cauldron and my pumpkin, keeping my fingers, my arms, my legs, my toes, everything. Toes? Toes. You know what? Why not? Those are crossed too, my toes. That the resin doesn't pour all over the place and I make a gigantic mess. Let's get brewing. That's something new I'm testing out. Do you like it? It's coffee themed. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Now, if you love the items in this box as much as I do, then make sure you check my links down below because I do have a couple different discount links for you guys to use. One is 10% off of anything in the Sophie and Toffee store, and another one is $3 off your first Elves box. So if you're interested in subscribing to the Elves box or getting any of these supplies, then make sure you use those links. So I couldn't resist adding Hyper Hollow to the pumpkin mold. <laughs> I tried to resist it, I couldn't. So I flipped the pumpkin mold inside out and coated the entire inside except for the face 
with the Hyper Hollow from Solar Color Dust. Then I really, really carefully flipped it the right way out again. I also applied the Hyper Hollow to the lid of the pumpkin. Then I mixed up my epoxy resin. Now this is not the Sophie and Toffee three to one resin because even though I've kind of mastered how to, I should not say mastered. <laughs> I should not say mastered. Even though I've kind of figured out the math involved with three to one resin, it takes forever to cure. And to be honest, I'm in a little bit of a hurry. So I used my normal one to one epoxy resin. I got this off of Amazon. It's not the best. I don't recommend it. I would rather use Envirotex Lite, but I don't have any right now. So I wanted my pumpkin to still be orange and I want to see, and I'm hoping, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, that the orange will still show through the hyper hollow and give that hollow kind of an orange color, which I think would look really, really cool. So I mixed in some of this orange kind of pearlescent powder that came in the elves box last year for the fishbowl bottle molds. Um, but I love that orange color so much. So. I thought it would be perfect for a pumpkin color. So I mixed in a whole bunch of that into my resin. Now the directions tell us to fill the pumpkin about halfway full, but it doesn't say how much resin it actually takes to fill. And this is a pretty big mold, including the lid. So just to play it safe, I mixed up 100 milliliters and that actually ended up being a little less than what I needed. I didn't end up having enough, but it's okay. I was terrified that I was going to overfill this pumpkin and then when I pushed the inside kind of plunger piece in that resin was just gonna like flow everywhere so I placed it on top of another silicone mold so just in case if it spilled it was easy to clean up and what I did is I kind of filled it less than halfway full they said just halfway I did less than halfway then I put the plunger piece in and then um, started to fill in the resin around the side and I had to keep peeking to see if it was going to the top because it was kind of hard to tell from looking on the outside um, and it turns out that I don't think I filled it enough um, but I would rather not fill it enough than have it overflowing everywhere. And to weigh down that little plunger piece I filled it up with some water. I was going to put in some kind of heavy objects like marbles, but then the inside of the mold would kind of have weird like divots from where the marble marbles weighed it down. So I just filled it up with water and that gave it a really nice even coat. Then I took my remaining orange resin and poured that into the pumpkin lid. I tried really hard to kind of squeeze the mold and fit the resin in and kind of poke it in with a toothpick. Um, it was really hard to get into those edges. So take your time, try to get in there. Um, and if you can't, I mean, I've seen that a lot of us have been having issues with this pumpkin lid mold. So don't freak out. It's kind of normal. <laughs> Thankfully, this resin cures pretty quick, so it was only about 24 hours later and I was able to demold it. And this hollow looks amazing. Oh my gosh. With the orange, it looks so cool. It almost looks like I used orange holographic powder. It shows so well. And unfortunately, the lid didn't get into all those little spaces, so I have a bunch of little air bubbles, but it's fine, it's really not a big deal. I don't really plan on having the lid on the pumpkin anyway. Also, I noticed that by the mouth on the jack-o'-lantern face, there are some holes. So if I had tried to make this a shaker, that would have been a huge problem, because then I would have to have done like a really weird patch job. Um, so thankfully, it's not gonna be a shaker. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I'm almost done with this one. And I felt like the lid was kind of missing something and I trimmed off a lot of those extra kind of pieces that were more sharp and jagged. It's a lot smaller than it was supposed to be, but I remembered that this box came with those really cute jack-o'-lantern charms. So I took the gold chain that came from the stained glass elves box from earlier this year 
and I pried apart some of the chains so it left me with just a screw eye pin and five links. And I screwed that into the top of the pumpkin lid. Then I attached jump rings to the chain and to the jack-o'-lanterns and hung them down the chain. So now it has this really pretty kind of sparkly chain accent. So when the lid is on, even though it's a little small and it looks kind of funny, the chain I think adds to it and kind of masks that the lid is smaller. <laughs> kind of masks my mistake. I can set the lid to the side and that chain kind of dresses it up a little bit. So even though the lid would be set to the side, it's still its own piece. If you're like me and you love to collect things that are holographic, then you would fit right in with the Coffee Bean family. You should subscribe so you can become a Coffee Bean too. And make sure you click that notification bell so you don't lose me to the big wide world of YouTube. I upload videos every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, I was the most excited to work on this cauldron mold, and I immediately had an idea of what I wanted it to look like. So using that same epoxy resin, I mixed up 100 milliliters. I didn't want my cauldron to be completely crystal clear, so I added some pearl alcohol ink to the resin and mixed that in to get this really pretty shimmery effect. And I also wanted there to be some glitter at the bottom of my cauldron, so I mixed in the tiniest bit of Martha Stewart's holographic glitter. In my experience, my glitter always sinks to the bottom of my molds, so I took a really big risk, hoping and praying that the glitter would sink to the bottom so that it would create a nice gradient of glitter so that there'd be a lot of glitter at the bottom and it would kind of dissipate up to the top and the top was more clear. So fingers crossed that that works. So I filled up the cauldron mold the same way I did the pumpkin. I poured in a little bit and then I put the plunger in and then I filled up the rest around the side with the resin and I kept peeking in to make sure it was filling up all the way to the top. And just like with the jack-o'-lantern, I filled in that plunger with some water to weigh it down. For the lid, I really wanted to use this really pretty glow-in-the-dark green and pink that came in this month's box. So I mixed each glitter up with some UV resin and kind of sporadically placed it around the mold in the bubbles and cured it with my UV light. Then I mixed in some black with my leftover epoxy resin and poured that all over the cauldron lid. Again, I let everything cure for 24 hours before demolding. And the lid and the cauldron came out perfect. Perfect! There's one or two holes around the rim but everything is the right size. I used the perfect amount of resin, so I'm happy about it. Plus, the glitter sank just like I wanted it to. It worked with me today. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so relieved. I just figured with my luck, the one time the glitter doesn't sink is now when I want it to. But it all sank to the bottom and spread just a little bit up the sides and it looks like such a cool gradient. I used my leftover green and pink UV resin mixture and put that into the Shaker Bits molds and I cured that under my UV light. I demolded those and then filled in the bits with my leftover black epoxy resin and I let that cure overnight. Then I picked out my favorite ones and put them onto a piece of tape on my desk and then I did the dry brush technique where I painted on some white and some black and wiped it off with a paper towel. That way it fills in all the little outline details. Then I coated that in the Sophie and Toffee UV varnish and I cured that under my UV light. Now I can finally fill up this cauldron mold. I want this to be a shaker just like what they advertised for the project. So I poured in a handful of the glow in the dark bats. Then I put in my painted shaker bits and I put in these two super cute bats. Next, I used my entire bottle of the green liquid, which by the way, the thing floating in there really freaks me out. I don't like it. It weirds me out. What it looks like to me is like a, one of those fake pieces of moss that you use in like dioramas. And I imagine that the green dye from that is what's dyeing the liquid, but I do not like it. It looks like mold. I don't, I don't like it. It really grosses me out. 
Does it gross you out? Did you guys get this box? And if you did, did your green liquid have that thing floating in there? Because I would love to know. <laughs> Tell me in the comments because it's really bothering me. Why am I obsessing over it? I don't, it, it, I don't like it. Once I emptied that whole bottle, I ended up using the entire bottle of the shaker oil and a whole other separate bottle of shaker oil to fill up the cauldron all the way to the tippy top. Then I applied some UV resin to the edge of the cauldron and pressed my lid onto that and then cured it under my UV light. I kept turning the cauldron around every few minutes to make sure that it really cured all of that resin. Then to make sure it was extra secure, I put another really thick coat of the UV resin around the top of the cauldron lid and I added some of my black holographic glitter to the top and cured that. Once it was all dry and cured, I used a paintbrush to brush off the extra glitter. Then one last final touch, I took my hot pink Posca pen and painted in the details of the handles on the side and the feet of the cauldron. Now, I know I had like a minor freak out about the Rocky Horror Picture Show keychain, and I'm sure you're surprised like, Bunny, why didn't you do the Rocky Horror keychain? You freaked out. I'm saving that for another video. I want to take my time. I want to make those tags look really nice. I don't think they have to be Halloween themed, so it's okay if I do it another time. I love these two pieces so much. Now, this holographic jack-o'-lantern completely started as just me wanting to do holographic on it because I can't resist holographic, but I realized as I was working on it that it totally reminds me of Ichabod Crane from Sleepy Hollow with the Headless Horseman, but this is like if the Headless Horseman was like fabulous <laughs> and just like covered in hollow. <laughs> so this kind of turned into my Sleepy Hollow glamorous chic. I am a little bummed out that the jack-o'-lantern lid was so hard to fill and I have so many gaps that are missing so now it doesn't really fit correctly. However, I love the charms that I added to it. I think it is really unusual. It's not something I think you would see. Um, so I think it really stands out and I love it. Plus, I love how the LED shines through the face. It looks so cool. And the holographic, oh my gosh. All of those ridges of the pumpkin catch that holographic so beautifully. And let's not forget my amazing cauldron shaker. <gasps> I love it so much. I love it so much. So many things about it glow in the dark, like the lid and the glow in the dark bats at the bottom. And when you swirl it around, it looks like you're mixing together an elixir because of how it glows. <gasps> And then even when the lights are on and you swirl it around, it gets kind of foggy and convoluted, but as everything starts to separate and you can see what's in there, oh, it's breathtaking. I love it so much. Plus, inadvertently, it kind of became a calming jar or a calming ca cauldron. <laughs> I'm sure there are witches and wizards out there who also need sensory toys, and this is the perfect thing. I just love how you can shake it up, get all these bubbles, and watch everything separate and kind of form into its own spaces. Plus, I love how the bats float around. I love that they don't just float on their back or on their tummy, but they float on their feet. It's so cool. Let me know in the comments below which of these pieces is your favorite, and if you would have done anything differently, what would you have done? Have you guys made anything from this box? Because I would love to see. You can tag me on Instagram at bunnydiy. And if you haven't made any of these, but you are really interested in trying, then make sure you check those links down below because they are two separate discount links for you. One is 10% off the entire store, and the other is $3 off your first elves box. So make sure you check. Even though Sophie and Toffee was a little late with these pieces so I couldn't get them done for spoopy season, I'm still so happy I had a chance to do them. Thanks so much for watching everyone! Love you a latte! Oh,